This is the message from Great Mother to the meek. Holy Spirit, Yin, Divine Mother, Cosmic Moon, Deep Space, the Moon, Dark Matter, the Void, the Black Hole, Atar, Isis, Diana, Mami, Ishtar, Kali, Mami, and Mother. Great Mother speaks to us in raw, realistic, and righteousness. Great Mother speaks to those of us who are most alienated from her unconditional love due to our birth mother experience. Here, welcome to Great Mother Speaks to Us in Raw, Realistic, and Righteousness. Great Mother speaks to those of us who are most alienated from her unconditional love due to our birth mother experience. Here, we are divine children of the Great Mother Father God, allowed to have whatever experience we choose to have on the planet. This is very important to understand because when we are born, when we arrive here, there is a veil that we experience between our spiritual awareness of who we are as a soul and the identity that we take on as an incarnate being. That veil of that incarnate being serves a purpose. This is not judgment or condemnation that we are all given a veil. Even those of us who are considered by most of us to be highly evolved, they too have a veil or they would not manifest here. And beings manifest at various frequency levels that are visible and invisible to the five sensory perceptions of the incarnate being. So let's be clear. Some of us, we can see the density is so thick and others we cannot. But the bottom line is this earth plane is a school. That is not because we are being judged and condemned. It is exactly why we are divine. We are divine because we are evolutionary beings. We are eternal beings. We're not eternal just to sit on this very dense concept of a heavenly throne. We are heavenly beings beyond that and frequencies beyond that that have to do with eternal evolution. That is not a judgment or condemnation. So when we arrive here and we are born into this physical being that the spirit being has chosen, has earned the karma to incarnate as for the privilege of experiencing yet another evolutionary identity that it has never had before. This is not a judgment or condemnation. This is a divine being incarnating for a new illustrious experience. It is given by the great mother, father, God. Who are together the inspiration and the manifestation simultaneously of this eternal spiritual evolution that is expressing right now in this physical being as us. As the five senses perceive it, we have senses higher than the five senses that do perceive our soul, which is why we have emotions and intuition. That is our radar. That is our tower above the biosphere, the new sphere of this realm, okay, which is the Milky Way galaxy, a physical, mythological concept of the cosmos, and we are all mythos in action. We have a story. Our soul has a story. It has an experience. And it has an individual and a collective experience, just as we have down here once we are born into a family. This family also comes from the cosmos and a soul group, a holographic group of souls that have simultaneous experiences in bodies that are incarnate and incarnate simultaneously. And we manifest in the physical realm at the will of our soul based on the karma that it has earned. What does that mean? Yes, we do get to choose our family to the degree that we have earned the 
karma to do so. Until we have demonstrated sufficient responsibility and respect for that kind of power to incarnate with another soul, we are assigned souls and souls group, soul groups as above, so below. Just as in our physical family, we are, regardless of the culture, regardless of the race, each and every family has their rules and regulations. Whether we judge them good or bad. Because ultimately there is no judgment or condemnation. This is yet another veil the soul has chosen to experience as a spirit, this perspective of life. And it is so imperative with this root chakra that we ground ourselves in, in this physical plane through the tribe, through our churches that we grow up in, our neighborhoods, our extended families, our communities, our political associations that really influence the, our formative years. This root chakra energy is so powerful that it allows that density of the veil to be so strong that it is impossible for most souls that incarnate in this realm as incarnate beings to release it within a lifetime, which is why death is necessary. Physical death is necessary in order for the soul to release an experience that has gone its distance. That's how powerful we are. We will start to get dragged down by an energy if we do not release it. Just like all the machinery that we own, all the technology that we own. Batteries die out eventually. You know, engines die out eventually. Why? Because gravity is pulling on everything, the density of this electromagnetic field that we're in, in order for spirit to purify. This is not a judgment or condemnation. This is to express a desire, which is our second chakra. Once those formative years of one through seven tell us who we're going to be in this life, then we are ready to establish our own desires. And by six or seven, most people know what they want to be. Now, whether or not we ultimately fulfill that, I've yet to speak to anyone that has a modicum of ambition who has not been able to tell me that they knew exactly what they were supposed to do this lifetime by age seven, and they desired it. That second chakra energy. It's procreative energy. It's the genitalia. It is also our desire to create life experiences that reflect that desire. So although we might want to be a doctor, we might not want to practice in the traditional way. Although we might want to be a musician, we may not want to perform in public venues, but do everything digitally and online. You know, there are unique ways that we want to express our desires. And when we run up against challenges in fulfilling that desire, which is what makes the years between seven and our preteen at the 14 so challenging, is that we get introduced to Saturn. We get introduced to really what has been established and what those limitations are from the root chakra. That veil creates a lot of limitations in terms of what we feel is possible and not possible, don't they? And once we begin to establish our desires, they're limited by those perspectives. For example, if you really thought that for you to be a doctor and you were taught that that meant you had to do this, you had to go to school for 12 years, you had to do this, you had to work at the hospital, you had to do that, and your spirit that has told you this is what you were going to do says, eh, that ain't what I meant. Yeah, the desire is the strongest, and the strongest desire you ever have will be to heal people, but that ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about going out and talking to the homeless people and using what you have learned through a lifetime of focusing on your desire to lay hands. 
That's 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 what I'm talking about. Not to say that the other way, it could be the reverse. You know, you could be brought up in a very spiritual family and that's what they meant by being a doctor and that's what they taught you as a child. And you wanted to go to medical school. It could be either way. But that's what second chakra is and that's what makes second chakra so challenging. And that's what makes conceiving of a child so challenging between two souls as well in many regards is the lack of clarity with regard to the desire for the child. Not knowing why you want to have a child, just having a child, not respecting the sacral, the sanctity of your divinity as a creative vessel. Not being clear about what you're about to manifest because you know as a divine being that once you assert that, it is manifested. But again, that kind of power is earned through lifetimes of karma that consistently and persistently face the challenge of this veil to not wait until the soul release of the physical body to be reborn, but to be reborn within a lifetime, which is what the Christ demonstrated to us is possible. So we go on through all of the chakras and we see the planetary aspects that are affecting that particular energetic space the root chakra, the anal, the hip area, you know, hip joint area, and a sense of groundedness on this earth. Forget just the family, although that's hard to do, which is why we focus on mama drama trauma and daddy drama trauma. That is the most difficult connection to release in order for there to be a rebirth in your groundedness that expands beyond the tribe so that you're grounded on this earth through Mother Earth, a variant energy of Great Mother called Gaia. Now, this saturnal energy reflects the energy of Saturn, which is restrictions and limitations that we discussed. The desire of the second chakra being ruled by Jupiter, we know, is expansive. It allows for expression. It rewards integrity that aligns itself with its life purpose. And the degree to which Jupiter is bountiful in our lives, reflected in our birth charts, of course, but in general, is all about working toward that soul desire, this lifetime. But in order to release the restrictions of Saturn, Saturn is pacified by taking that desire up to wanting to heal why the soul is desiring what it's desiring. Because every desire is an expression of lack. And each time we incarnate with a desire, we are saying we have not had that experience and we're wanting to have it. So we're lacking in that experience. But that is the energetic frequency of it in higher realms in the cosmos, which is what we can see in the natal chart, which is why getting readings takes the charge off of our dense understanding of these things so that we can process it more efficiently. The earthly perception of lacking is poverty. So it's difficult to connect the dots when you feel that you're being condemned. Most people who experience poverty feel that I'm lacking, it's not fair, there are other people around me who are not. What is this about? Well, the lacking has to do with a soul that wants to experience that. So... It will not lack in that experience either. There is no good or bad. There is just 
eternal life. That's the Christ message of eternal grace and mercy. It doesn't stop. We don't stop being divine, divine, even if we try to convince ourselves of that. And that is a lifetime experience we want to have. That is not good or bad. We want even that experience too. And so if we have enough lifetimes of experiencing that kind of energy, that kind of frequency, that kind of self-destructive and malignant energy, then we begin to attract more and more density. And the more density we attract, the more of our divinity identity we release. Mama drama drama. The soul desiring to experience the lack of a mother's love is a soul that is sincerely on the evolutionary path. Because it knows it's a divine child of the great mother, father, God. You don't get to have that kind of karma until you can, in other words, how can you desire to have an experience of lacking something if you do not believe it's possible to lack it? You have to believe it's possible to lack the love of your mother. And how do you get to that point? Well, you've been traveling some dark lifetimes. And you've seen it around you and you've seen the effects of it. And you're saying, I want to experience that now. Again, this is a soul that has the karma to make those kinds of soul evolutionary choices. Because you choose the mother. You're beyond the point of all of these things being assigned to you. All of these souls in your soul group and lifetime being assigned to you because you have acquired a point of evolution where you respect the power of being able to choose. This is the law of divine order. As above, so below. Look at the natural law and you will have a very good clue of how spiritual law works. And that is how natural law works. Natural law is there is a chain of command based on responsibility. And what does Saturn, the gatekeeper between the realms, what does he say? Satan says, give me what you got. You said you was coming here to do this, whether you were able to choose or whether you were just grateful to be able to come and you have this experience. You have a certain amount of time to be here to do what you said that you were here to do. And you do it, whether you get rewarded or not. Okay? That's all I want to know is are you doing what is in your heart, what you said to come to do or not? It's not a judgment or a condemnation. It is you don't need to be rewarded in a dense world. You are already rewarded because you have the privilege of even requesting and even more. You are a divine child. So if you get caught up in the glamour and the illusion of recognition and reward in this world, You'll always miss it when it's coming from the higher world and it is giving you more than that world could ever give you. It has a math all of its own, an economy all of its own, a healing system and circuits that line up with healing and blessing that this world is evolving to. But in the time and space that you're in it, according to your natal chart, you're going to have to get these surges from up above. Okay? And so best thing you do is stay in tune with it. If you are going to fulfill what you said you was coming here to do. 
And the more and more lifetimes that we align with that and accomplish that, we have more and more energy to do more and more powerful, magical healing work. Now that does go both ways. Does that mean that this is good? It means that we are having an evolutionary experience that we are activating on the full kundalini auric etheric levels. We're on. All systems go. Body, mind, spirit align. And we want to feel that experience. That experience is just as important and no more important than the experience of the fear mongering and the experience of lacking the love of a mother that creates that. It is no more holy. It is no more noble. It is all divine. There is an order to this. We don't get to dictate it. The best we can do, if we must speak in those terms, is to align with that that is within us to be true. Is this good or is this bad? It is what it is. And it is the world that we see. It is as it is. We don't get to judge other people's experiences. First and foremost, ourselves. We're constantly learning what this is about and this dents around. And if you don't have the time or make the time to do the spiritual practices that keep you connected, unless you are already connected pretty consistently on a daily basis, and again, people have various levels of understanding of what this means and various levels of denial with regard to the time and the connection that they have. But make no mistakes. That connection is something that you do feel on with. And many times, so much so, it is difficult living in this physical realm. It is something that puts people in insane asylums, um, on drugs, to try to maintain some type of emotional homostasis. Because going between these worlds is like switching stations in a car radio going down Route 66 in 1966. It's a bunch of static rolling the dials in between radio stations when you hit these little towns and the radio will go out. You have to tune it again and tune it again. The equivalent today would be, you know, you're on some music app and you haven't bought the full program. You know, you done, you know, going the cheap way with the ads and you just, they really get you jamming with them songs. You done put thumbs up on, they get you jamming, you got your little roll going. You like, hey, you can't wait to the next one. You really in the zone. You on for real. And then they come with that ad and turn it off. That's how you know what your spiritual practice is. And um, you can play games with the cosmos with something like that. That's how I remember that example. I would be like, okay, Lord, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm still considering, because I'm Taurus Moon, I take my time deciding. I said, I'm still considering which of these apps I'm going to get. But... In the meantime, in between time, when I have me one of them grooves going, can you please let me be? Please. Or at least give me a song in between I don't like. So if the commercial come on, I ain't as upset. This is what we call specific prayer. Be specific in your prayers. That's how you know how close of a relationship with the divine that you have. And this is a constant evolving process because... 
Again, we're always working with our desires. That second chakra connects to everything. That second chakra is like the heart chakra and the sixth chakra, Ajna, the third eye. They all connect to everything, but in terms of that on switch, um, second chakra, fourth chakra, and sixth chakra are those parts of us that I guess in traditional medicine is called autonomic or autonomic system. The the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nerves, those yin energies that are recuperative and restorative in terms of our health and um, what they call the conception vessel in Asian medicine. It is what the body holds. It's the emotions that the body holds and how it releases those emotions. And so we're starting to see the relationship between these systems and the cerebellum now, which we just thought governed the motor system or the governor system or the, um, you know, organ system that, um, really activates all of these processes. So that yang energy, you know, um, they're not separate. They're together. There's, you can't live one without the other, you know, um, this is why there's no good and bad. It's yin yang energy. It's active energy, what we're acting on in this physical realm consciously. And there's that responsive or receiving energy that receives the effects of those actions. And the actions are also in the process inspired by the yin, by the emotion, by the intuitive process. And so it's just a matter of what channels do we have open the most, Do we have the channel open to receive more in a receiving from the yang energy that is active and is needed in specific times and situations on a day-to-day basis, all day, even involuntarily? When we're walking, we don't need to think about, okay, my left foot is going, my right foot, okay, my pace is going to be this. You know, that motor system takes care of all of that. And the sympathetic system is dealing with how our body is recuperating from three slices of pizzas and wine and beer, you know, (laughs) involuntarily. What are we focusing on? And so if we're doing healing work and we're not feeling so good to be walking around, with the yang motor energy and we really do need to heal well the first thing we do is not act on oh my stomach is hurting let me take a pill we take a moment we get in connection with that conception vessel within us that artery system that supports all of that recovery and that emotional perceptive space that holds itself in our bodies along with the gluten and the fat and the toxicity that we're trying to process. The glands respond to what the mind is focusing on. So if the mind is focusing on just getting the pill, the glands that start to activate the neural paths and neural receptors that start opening up upon the thought of that, they're ready by the time it's swallowed to start churning the organs in motion to respond to the effects of that medication. However, if we stop and take a moment and we reflect on, oh, yeah, that's what I had last night. That's why I don't feel very good. Okay. And know 
that it's not about judgment or condemnation, then we can go to the third chakra, the gut chakra, and say, oh, this is Martian energy. This is ruled by Mars. This is the yang energy. And so I really do need to pay attention to what I put in my gut. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult to process and probably painful because Mars represents battle. It also represents our self-esteem, which is where the battle takes place. Our self-esteem determines our will. The gut chakra is our willpower to do what in every moment? Is it yang or is it yin? Do I need to reflect and allow myself to recover and recuperate? Do I need to reflect without judgment and condemnation and recognize it was what I ate last night and therefore begin to look at maybe some ginger tea, maybe begin to look at some things that are going to work with my body, parasympathetic, conception, receptive, allows my body to open up the neural net and the neurons that are telling my body, I hear you. Not that one is better than the other. There are different experiences. There are different perceptual reactions and karma that we experience. So we can consciously choose our experience and how we heal and how we develop our willpower is by visiting and revisiting our self-esteem. Because our self-esteem is how we feel about ourselves. If I feel that I am just Tammy who was born in Kansas and who had this experience in my life and then I realized I had mama drama trauma and then I did this and I did that, that's a very limited scope from which I can draw my self-esteem. Self-esteem is how we feel about who we are. If that is all I am, that's pretty much where I can draw my self-esteem from, right? But if I am a divine child of the great mother, father, God, who is never judged, condemned, or left alone, my self-esteem goes out the roof. How I feel about who I am is, damn, that's me. That's what all these religions have been talking about, I am. But nobody could show me except Jesus. Dang, okay, 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 okay. And again, how we use the information is based on our perception of it. And if our perception of it is that it is a license to be licentious, then that is the experience of our divinity that we will have. But if we take it on as a birthright to be happy, healthy, and whole, then we can pretty much decide not only how we feel about ourselves, but the degree of self-confidence we want to activate in our lives. You know, everybody has 12 houses. But each of us activate them differently and at different times in this life. So if you are in a place where you are really wanting to activate self-confidence, then knowing that that's third house energy with regard to siblings, co-workers, and neighbors, and fifth house energy, Leo, then we know that this is energy that is solar mercurial energy. 
it's very strong. It's very powerful. And it's intelli- it has an intelligence to it that operates in our lives on a heart above chakra level, throat chakra to the crown chakra, throat chakra being Mercury, crown being the sun. And confidence is feeling good about what we do. Confidence is feeling good about what we do. So the self-confidence that we need to own our divinity identity is a kind of confidence that only comes from an intelligence that has been reborn. It has been reborn. It has been reborn. It has been reborn so that it can have the karma necessary to animate that desire. In other words, until we are reborn, we don't have the points in our karma bank account to purchase the self-esteem, the self-confidence. Self-esteem is second is 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 third chakra. Okay, that's heart below. And so we have the karma to purchase self-esteem, feeling good about who we are. As a divine child, the great mother, father, God, anybody can do that. Gut chakra is survival, it's instinct. All human beings have that. And so everybody can embrace our, our divinity identity. But in order to feel good about what you do with that, remember, you can do whatever you want to do with that information. And we perceive it based on where we are in our evolutionary process. That's why we can't judge people because we don't know what their cosmic calculus is. We don't know what houses are being activated in their life. That's their soul contract. That's their business, literally, including our mothers. Although we are connected in mama drama trauma, which is gut chakra down. That's not feeling good about who we are. What is that? That's guilt. Second chakra. Not feeling desired, not feeling wanted, therefore not knowing what you want or what you desire in your life. That's second chakra. That's blame. We blame her. We blame ourselves because we've gotten off track. We know that we have the soul root chakra that is incarnated in order to have this highly evolutionary experience with MDT, which is twofold, to evolve in self-love. Self-love is heart chakra above. Love is heart chakra Self-love is not the survival, instinctual, ego self-love of the gut chakra below. It's the throat chakra, intelligent self-love. That who, it's the intelligence that knows itself. Because it's combined with the sun. So to be able to feel good about what we do with our divinity identity is when we do make the choice to use that divinity identity to follow the Christ consciousness, which is based on the Sermon of the Mount, in a nutshell, are three things. And those three things that all his followers are asked to do, and why are we followers of Christ? We're followers of Christ because he showed us how to be reborn within a lifetime. We don't have to wait to do all this stuff. We don't have to wait consciously until the soul releases this body. We can align with the soul, but we have to do so consciously. God, who are never judged, condemned, or left alone. We have taken on in a self-loving way the instructions to the disciples which is to proclaim liberty to the spiritual captives 
to proclaim joy to those in the bondage of fear and to heal others in accordance to the will of God. Now, how do we know the will of God? Well, through knowing who we are. And so if we just know that, we know the will of God. The great mother, father, God say that we are dearly loved. Whether you believe it or not, whether you feel like you've experienced it or not, that is who you are. Now, are you going to say, well, since I don't know it, it can't be and have that experience or say, well, since I don't know it and I believe that it's true. I'm going to ask, I'm going to communicate, I'm going to have a spiritual practice that I will engage in this communication, in this dialogue further, like any scientist, like any divine child, God or goddess can do. And does on a daily, daily, moment by moment basis. So why not do so with awareness? Because this awareness will take us to being a dearly loved child who is never judged or condemned. Never. There's no way you could be judged or condemned and be dearly loved at the same time. First off. That's a contradiction. I don't care what your religions teach. It's a contradiction. You can't be dearly loved and then judged and condemned at the same time. You can, as all existence is, express your experiences you choose in whatever frequency comes up from that is the karma that comes up from it. That's what you're going to do. And so, again, we can either do it with awareness or we can continue with this ignorance is bliss thing until we don't want to experience that. There's never any judgment or condemnation. Whatever you want to do, you want to judge it good or bad. If that makes you feel great, fantastic. But the spiritual teachings are constantly saying that this is about energy. What you give out, you're going to get. Now, there's a bunch of other stuff heavily laid in on top of that, but you have to go through your own experiences until you get to a point where you realize what's true and what is not. In the meantime and in between time, you just recognize what you're resonating with and honor that. That's what Saturn wants to know. That's what that root chakra wants to know. And to evolve from that root chakra through the chakras up to the heart, you are allowing yourself to realize, although there's no judgment or condemnation, there are consequences for my actions. How I feel about something is experienced as a powerful energy, but the karma is not recorded until I take action, until I put some yang on it, which is what Saturn is all about. Saturn is that yang powerful energy that incarnates us and the energetic exchange for us to have that intensity of power bestowed upon us to incarnate. You know how much power that is? It's incalculable, however you say that, incalculable. In exchange for that, Saturn, Satan, is looking at the watch as soon as you come out the womb and clocking it. Okay? Somebody's standing there. And I don't care whether they're looking at a eye watch or they looking at uh, the sun, the moon, and the stars. Saturn's sitting there incarnate, recording that shit, recording it. From the beginning to the end, you want to stop watch. Now, realizing that you are a divine child who has carnated, who's dearly loved, whether this incarnated rooted experience as a child or whatever feels like it or not, as you start to confront your desires and you getting what you're getting or you not, you not, 
as you establish how you feel about yourself and self-esteem, gut chakra, processing emotions about what's happening in your life and this and that, that and the not, to realizing, okay, finally as a divine child, I am never left alone. That's heart chakra energy. That is breaking through. That's when the kundalini starts to... Um, it starts to swivel, you know, it it has a little, um, has a little turn to it, has a little, uh, swerve to it. It starts to swerve, um, not a little bit, but a lot. And, um, it has swerved before, particularly at the first incarnation and the second chakra desire and all that has its curve to it but that swerve that it starts to get on is at that heart chakra and that heart chakra breaks it open and that's why we have the arrow through the heart symbolism the heart has to be broken in order to open And that is a simultaneous process, and it is activated by the awareness of our divinity. That awareness comes usually with MDT, with realizing that you deserve better. That is the first beginning to crack of the heart, when the heart begins to hurt, and you realize, I could be treated better than how my mother treats me. This is unacceptable it breaks your heart to admit that to yourself that's the first crack and the next crack after that is okay so what am I going to do and we marinate on that for a long time because it takes a while to go from gut chakra feeling good about who we are I'm a divine child of great mother father God I deserve better than this I don't feel dearly loved in this I feel shame I feel blame I feel guilt I ain't feeling no dearly love that's my mama but uh no I want to now experience feeling good about myself I want to experience loving myself whether even my own mother loves me or not Despite even that experience, I want to be purified in self-love so that it is great. I want to evolve in self-love. That desire breaks open the heart even more. Telling ourselves the truth about that owning that is extremely heartbreaking and when we tell ourselves the truth which is what integrity is integrity is not just telling the truth integrity is telling ourselves the truth and when we tell ourselves the truth about how we feel slowly but surely as we adhere to that and remain aligned with that we begin to see that We're feeling better about who we are. At first, we feel pretty bad about who we are because all the guilt and all the shame and all the blame points toward us due to our own self-judgment and self-condemnation and the judgment and condemnation of others once we begin to assert our sense of self-value. So it comes from all directions, which is why this is the realm of soul guardian and guardianship. This is where the angels really come in. And this is where we really start to get a lot of guidance from our ancestors. Because we have come through this DNA line with this particular operation of our neural nets, of our DNA of everything that operates, how the filter, the veil of this experience operates. That's DNA. That's the placebo. That's the setup. But the truth of 
the outcome is reliant upon us. We ultimately decide the outcome whether we realize it or not. And this realization is really something that is only achieved through intuitive communication, that consistent relationship with spirit, the development of that intuition, and the guidance that you're going to need from people like me and people like other coaches and people in your family who have good insight and that normally can't tell you nothing, but they're the people that have a higher insight at least than you do. They got lead, you, you recognize them as having at least higher insight than you do. Not because of they are materially successful, but because as far as that yin inner stuff, they have some insight to it that you know you don't have and that you need to get. That type of guidance is going to help you develop your intuition. Books, you know, blogs, Instagram uh, channels, however you want to do it. YouTube videos. It's all out there now. And no excuse, okay? And get better at your inner communication because you're going to need it. You're going to need it in order for you to feel connected to your soul. You can talk about it all day long and try to avoid doing the work that's necessary to have this confidence you know, um, that we are all lacking. And this is why we lack it, is because it doesn't exist without the rebirth. Now, there are a lot of things in this realm that masquerade as confidence, but let's be clear once again. Self-esteem is feeling good about who you are. That's gut chakra. Any general of an army can feel good about who they are. Any child who is the tyrant of the family can feel good about who they are. And any humble servant that shares of his or her gifts, services, and abilities can feel good about who they are. But let's be clear. That's gut chakra. We're talking heart above energy, fifth chakra, throat chakra, ear, nose, throat doctor, smells it hears it, tastes it, speaks it, that intuitive signal comes through the third eye and it immediately expresses through the gut chakra just below it. And that gut chakra is where self-confidence exists. Self-confidence is feeling good about what we do, what we speak, what we hear, what we smell in our environment. Smelling symbolically means what we sense is going on in our environment. How strong are those intuitive vibes? Well, if they're not strong enough to achieve self-confidence, there's some more heartbreaking, there's some more release, there's some more truth-telling to oneself that needs to happen in order to earn the karma that will give you the balance sheet to say, okay, 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 okay. The truth is, I really do feel completely deceived by everybody in my life because I have deceived myself into behaving and accepting what is less than my divinity. Uncle, Uncle Saturn. I was born into that. That is the veil that I've been living from and I've been seeing life from. Uncle, 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 uncle. Okay, okay, you can let my arm go now. I got I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Fifth chakra, Mercury. Mercury is the son of who? Jupiter. The wise one. The wise one is the second chakra 
the sacral, the sacred desire. And that sacred desire connected with the heart is our light at the end of the tunnel of the heartbreak. We get back to the desire. We get back to the original agenda. We get back to what we thought we had forgotten, what we thought we had lost. And there is joy and there is celebration and there is a reconnection. And we are being asked once again to release old ways that we heard things, old ways that we spoke things, old ways that we sensed our environment as being unsafe, as being a place that would not support me. I release old ways of speaking to myself, to my heart. I release the filters that allowed me to consistently and persistently be enraged, triggered by this pain of not being loved by my mother. And so how do I do this? How do I do this? I've come this far and I've done so much and I'm so tired and I've worked so hard. How now do I do this? Do, 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 Yang, Mars. The gut is processing all of this. The emotions, the IBS, the intestinal bowel syndromes, the diverticulitis, the this, the that. Colon operations, this and that, colonoscopies. We're trying to coerce this process that we have to consciously go through. And the kundalini that is activated by this awareness of our divinity creates physical discomfort. The ancients have spoken of this in the Vedas. They have spoken of this in the Torah. They have spoken of this through all of our um, healing modalities. You know, ancient Buddha texts have also spoken of this process and the story of Jesus Christ, the crucifixion. The giving up of the identity of Jesus, Joseph's son, son of Mary, as we knew them, to die to that identity. And along with that, they died to that identity and were reborn as he, as we, joint heirs of Jesus Christ, are also reborn. How? by sacrificing the sacred cow of that ego identity. Yes, I am Tammy from Kansas, born into a very loving family that allowed me to see and experience the world and supported me in that. And that also taught me that family is everything, even at the expense of yourself. I was married to someone that they approved of in that philosophy. And when I activated my kundalini, it was through the integrity of owning the fact I was not experiencing love in my marriage because I was replicating the lack of love I was feeling in my relationship with my mother. At that time, my MDT developed during my marriage when she became an alcoholic. I think she was observing the same patterns in me and that is her way of processing. So for me, my processing was to recognize, okay, my heart is breaking. Why is this happening? And to go deep within myself. I also indulged in alcohol and other vices as well. It is a simultaneous process. It's DNA and RNA. It's yin and it's yang. 
you know, we find a balance. And that's why great mother talks to us about clarity. When we have clarity, the reason I cannot engage in dialogue with her in relationship is because there's no clarity. The imbalance of the alcoholism does not allow for the clarity that's necessary for the light to shine through that relationship. So it's just toxic. The kundalini awakening and me realizing that through the process of my, realizing my desires of my life had been theirs. This is not to say it was a deliberate agenda. This, again, is never about judgment or condemnation, even if it was. But it is about recognizing that. And recognizing is about being aware of our divinity. And that we are never judged and condemned either. The more we compassionately we see others, like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, the Scarecrow, the Lion, and the Tin Man, these unusual characters, the more compassionate we can be with others who, are, who seemingly are so unlike us, but yet are various aspects in ourselves. And we know that because we are all divine. That means we all come from the holographic field. So whatever house is activated in your cosmic calculus compared to mine or not, we fit into this divine order that allows us to eternally evolve. Whether I'm seeing you on this end as my mother, or I'm seeing you on another end as my nephew, or I'm seeing you on another end as my guru in a spiritual school when I am at a frequency that moves so rapidly, it cannot be observed in the physical realm. However I'm experiencing you, the density of this MDT soul contract is turning on the buttons that are saying align with your divinity and your divinity is based on how you feel loved that is the first evolutionary lesson of the soul contract it is the desire to evolve in self-love the second evolutionary purpose of mama drama trauma is to evolve in spiritual independence that is that personal integrity that's why it says only God knows a man's heart how can we know our heart when we're afraid that it's always going to be wrong that it's always going to be judged that it's always going to be not enough That it's not going to know what it needs to know. That it's going to be dumb. That it's going to be always falling short. How can we ever see or feel God's love? If we can't even accept that it shows up as being our number one fan. Great Mother, Father, God. They want us to own our birthright of being healthy, happy, and whole. And they know our heart. They know our soul contracts. They know the veils that we have and the struggles and the challenges that we have as spirits coming into this dense physical form in order to do it. They know it better than we do. So again, how would we then be condemned for it? This is the teachings of the Great Mother Speaks Oracle deck. And Great Mother Speaks readers are people that are using the deck as a tool to connect with that divinity on a meaningful and consistent basis in order to let go of the mother that we want in order to accept the one that we have. That is the rebirth. That is the regeneration that comes through 
the self-love and spiritual independence that says, I own my relationship to great mother, father, God, and I know it is an evolutionary, that it grows, that it changes, that it evolves. It is always expanding and contracting. And I am always guided as long as I choose through my free will to stay in touch, to stay aligned with it. I always know where I'm going and how to handle what's coming up and how to get there. I'm always given that when I need it. It takes time. It takes as much time as it takes. And the journey is such a lovingly exciting journey that we can sometimes forget that that's where we're headed. And it can also be experienced as an overly challenging journey to where we forget where we are headed. And we are headed toward embracing our divinity identity so that we can embrace the mother that we have, which is the mother of all mothers, great mother. She is also our mother's mother. She is the Holy Spirit, the still small voice, the comforter that Christ left in his stead when his physical body was released by the soul. So we are constantly, just like our big brother, Christ, releasing, always releasing. And we still haven't gotten over his releasing of the physical body. You know, we're still wanting to hold on to what was instead of how this Christ consciousness has really evolved in this world and how we are experiencing this Christ consciousness. You know, are we experiencing it in ways that make us feel loved? So Great Mother is about feeling emotions, our intuition, that yin energy, being the inspiration for the action. Of the lunar cycle is Great Mother energy that occurs right after the full moon. The final 14 days of the lunar cycle, Great Mother is inspiring the release of all that does not pertain to the culmination of light, the full moon just exhibited. The full moon was a culmination of insight and balance, clarity and confirmation of great mother, father, God, love as highly as it could be expressed with regard to every aspect of our lives, with regard to every house in the chart being activated. And that house that's activated at that time, be it a Scorpio full moon or Sagittarius full moon that's coming up June 2009 in the astrology, tropical or Western, depending on what you go on. It's in either of those, that energy being culminated for you in a way that supports your sense of divinity, not just being loved, but being dearly loved. The phase after that full moon is going into more of an energy that is inspired by great mother to let go of what does not make you feel dearly loved we're not talking just about love we're saying dearly loved just precious just the most precious thing incalculable treasure stardust with a consciousness that is evolving and that is guarded and protected. It's so precious. And just swirling through the cosmos, having this experience of divinity and opening up this consciousness after the full moon with the sense of releasing whatever doesn't support that, whatever does not support this 
feeling of being dearly loved must be let go. And whatever house it's activating, whatever sign it's in, it's being supported. And exactly the kind of let go needs to happen in relationship to your moon sign. And everyone has a different moon sign. If not, everyone has a moon sign that's in a different nakshatra, that's in a different pada in the Vedic astrology. And to the nth degree, there is an energy that is consistently supporting the release of shame, blame, and guilt. The veil that has kept you from your heart and heart above consciousness. This is that third eye alignment that says, I am now downloading the intuition that allows me to consciously look at this lifetime with the assistance of others that know a little bit more than I do about this and whom I resonate with to help me gain a clearer understanding of how to get from where I am to where I want to go. What are my soul's gifts, talents, and abilities? What are my soul's perceived limitations so that I may align my free will to support the release of those even? Third quarter moon energy, which is complete release of those things. And to wring the towel out even more, we go to balsamic energy. Both of those moon phases have a specific suit in the Great Mother Speaks Oracle deck. Third quarter moon is its own suit that has to do with the universal laws. And Great Mother, Father, God are expressed equally with third quarter moon energy. It's half moon energy of release. And so the laws are set up in the universe in order for we re- for us to release any and everything that does not serve our divinity. And so we have these experiences of what does not serve our identity because as the balsamic moon wanes into full inspiration from Great Mother to release what no longer serves us, it begins to, in the new moon, be activated by the sun in order to do what Great Mother has inspired it to do now that it has released the old. Now that you've released what no longer serves your divinity, the seed is being planted in the first half, 14 days of the new lunar cycle. Now what you going to do with this new moon energy, with this new moon in Gemini Cancer? which is the new moon of the eclipse, July 2nd, resetting the whole stage of how we going to do this. Why? Because now the sun and the moon are making love. Great mother, father, God are together. Full moon, they are on opposing signs, sides of the earth, illuminating the lesson of the previous cycle. Here at the new moon, the seed is being planted. The love is being made for the dearly loved child. The love is being made from what it has learned from its previous evolutionary cycle. And this seed needs sunlight in order for it to be grounded in the earth. It needs rain, it needs emotion, it needs spirit, it needs focus, it needs focused attention, and whatever sign that new moon is in is a clue as to where the support is specifically coming from, and specifically with a solar eclipse, the support is always the ultimate release. It is the reset button, the purge, the volcanic release. So get ready to use these supportive energies and look at where you are now 
and where you want to be after this release. And tune into the support that's available to you for this release. This is the message from Great Mother to the meek. Remember, as always, Great Mother loves you, and I do too.